Hey class, welcome to video 4-5 here. We're in equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. And I'm on page 205 if you want to follow along. Um, what we're going to be working on in this section is talking about what relationship um, the equations of lines have when they are parallel or perpendicular. So in our explore here, just a quick reminder about slope. Remember, slope of a line is rise over run. And just to highlight that, rise over run, remember, is the change in the y coordinate over the change in the x coordinate. And typically we can kind of draw in a triangle just like you see here on um, the grid or on the coordinate plane. From one coordinate point to the other, if we draw in a, a slope triangle, in other words, go all the way over and all the way up to the point, um, then we can actually usually count those blocks right on the grid if we're given um, a, a coordinate plane graph in order to count it on. Sometimes we're not, so that most of the time we can do that. Um, so in our explore here, we're going to be talking about, first off, um, in A, the equations of lines y equals 2 times x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 3. So what I would do for this first equation is, of course, I would distribute so we have 2x plus 2 and then as we come over to the graph remember we're going to start by graphing the y-intercept right at 2 and then from there we're going to go with our slope triangle rise of 2 and a run of 1 so our next point will be over 1 and up 2 from there and we can make that line and then the next equation is y equals 2x minus 3. So in this case, we're going to start down at negative 3 for our y-intercept. And we're going to, again, have a rise over run of 2 over 1. So rise 2 over 1. Make your next point And draw in that line. Sorry, I missed the points there, but you get the idea. Um, so the question is, what do you notice about the graphs of the two lines? The graphs of the two lines are parallel. And what's true about their slopes? Well, you guys, the slopes are 2 and 2. So when I have parallel lines, we have the slopes are the same. Then we have a new example here where we have the graphs of x plus 3y equals 22 and y equals 3x minus 14. That's down here. That's what you see in the uh, grid next to part C. Um, just to show you what that is, if we go ahead and change our x plus 3y equals 22 to a slope-intercept form, remember the steps we would use there would be first to subtract x from both sides, and then to divide everything by 3, that means all three terms get divided by 3. So y equals, in this case, negative 1 third x plus 22. Okay. Um, so in this case, it says use a protractor, and we could plunk a protractor down here, but they want to know what is the measure of the angle formed by the intersection of the lines. So what is this angle right here? likely to be. If we use a protractor, it's 90 degrees. So what does that tell you about those lines? Of course, we know the definition is that that means that they are perpendicular. What do we notice about the slopes of the lines in this case? The slopes of the lines being 3 for y equals 3x minus 14 and negative 1 third um, for negative 1 third x plus 22 Actually, that should be 22 thirds, shouldn't it? Let's change that. Sorry, you guys. Um, what's true about those two numbers? Well, they're not the same. They're not even the same sign. And one's a fraction and one's not technically, although I guess we could probably put that 3 over 1. Let's think of it that way for the slope. Um, what are the slopes of the two lines? Well, the slopes of the two lines are 3 and negative 1 third. How are they related? You guys, they are what are known as opposite reciprocals. 
opposite meaning different sign and reciprocals meaning if we have a over b the reciprocal is of that fraction b over a it flips it upside down okay numerator becomes denominator and vice versa so let's complete this statement here if two non-vertical lines are are parallel then they have equal slopes and if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular then the product of their slopes is hmm that's an interesting way to think about it well what could we do if we take a over b for our first slope and then take a different sign like we talked about right here and then we flip that fraction and multiply it well we would have b over a and one part of that fraction would be negative so that would become the product of their slopes is the multiplication so that would become negative a b over negative a b and I don't know about you guys but I know that that reduces to simply negative one so opposite reciprocal slopes have a product of negative one that means they are perpendicular and if the slopes are equal then that means the lines are parallel those are the two major distinctions we need to keep in mind as we go through the rest of our examples so on the next page here we're writing equations of parallel lines and we're going to be given an equation of a line and then a point and we're going to use the slope relationships um, to use point slope form notice point slope form right here remember is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 where a reminder that x1 comma y1 is whatever point is given to you. Okay, so let's walk through this example A together. Um, the line parallel to y equals 5x plus 1 that passes through negative 1 comma 2. That's the equation we have to create. Well, now we know parallel lines have equal slopes. So the slope is going to be the same as what I have from the original equation, which is 5. Then we're going to use point slope form and we're going to fill in what we know. We know m, x1, and y1. So substitute y1 is 2, m is 5, and negative 1 is x1. Now notice it's always minus in that equation whether or not x1 is negative. So we have a minus a negative here. Keep that in mind. y minus 2 then equals 5 if we distribute 5 times x plus 1 or 5x plus 5. And then solve for y. We have the equation of our line is y equals 5x plus 7. Part b, let's fill in as we go. The line parallel to negative 3x plus 4 that passes through 9, negative 6 is what we're going to be finding the equation of this time. We're going to use um, the idea that parallel lines have equal slopes. And so the slope we're looking for to be in our new line is negative 3. Using point slope form and substituting what we know, y1 is negative 6, m is negative 3, the slope that we're looking for, and then x1 is 9. So substituting and simplifying there, we get y plus 6 equals negative 3x and then plus 27. If we solve for y, we get y equals negative 3x. And then, of course, we'll subtract the 6, so we get plus 21. Next, we want you to go a little further down the page to, actually, to the next page, page 207. And you are going to be doing two your turns in this section, um, all about parallel lines. And in the same exact idea, I would just be aware, you guys, right here, that the line parallel to y equals negative x, remember, we could also consider as some number that is the same thing as multiplying by a negative. And then notice there's no intercept there. So keep in mind what those two numbers 
could be if we expanded that out to slope intercept form first, okay? So take a pause on the video and then we're going to move on to perpendicular lines. Okay, finally explain two, we're using and writing equations of perpendicular lines and remember the relationship we discovered is that we have opposite reciprocals for the slopes. So as we work through the problem, we want to keep that um, opposite reciprocal, flip the fraction, change the sign idea in mind. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. I'm reading just right here, which means the product of the slopes will be negative 1. So if I have 4, I want to know 4 times what gives me negative 1. Well, that would be negative 1 fourth. That's the slope I'm looking for. So that's going to go in for my m into point slope form. And then, of course, we have x1 is 3, y1 is negative 1. Substituting those values in pretty much the exact same way. The only difference is the slope being opposite reciprocal. And because we have a negative 1 fourth out front, we want to make sure we distribute the negative carefully and work with those fractions carefully. But equation when we're finished should be negative 1 fourth x minus 1 fourth. Part B, let's fill in as we go. The line perpendicular to negative 2 fifths, so let's highlight that slope as an important number that we need to keep track of. That passes through negative 6, negative 8. And we know again the product of the two slopes has to be negative 1. So the question is what number times negative 2 fifths gives me negative 1? Again, opposite, change the sign and flip it. So positive 5 halves in this case. That's a 5 and that's a 2. Um, and so if we use point slope form and substitute what we know, we have m and x1 and y1 that we know already from the start of the problem. So y minus negative 8, m is going to be 5 halves, and x1 is negative 6. Be careful as we distribute there. Um, 5 halves is going to be 5 halves x plus... 5 halves times 6 is 15. And then moving the positive 8 and subtracting it over to the other side, we have 5 halves x plus 7 for our final answer. On the next page, the last page of our section here before we get to the homework, we're going to be doing your turn number 7 and 8, and again, we're keeping an eye on the perpendicular and the opposite reciprocal idea. We'll see you guys next time.